Hi, everyone, and welcome to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder. I'm a managing director at B. Riley Financial, and I'm also the author of the new ROI, Return on Individuals. Welcome to the show that digs deeper to understand what matters most in business. Today, I've got a guest who is a client who has uh, gone from CFO in the corporate world to CFO in the world of academia. Pleased to welcome Roger Slagle, who's the CFO and VP for Finance at Mars Hill University. Roger, welcome to Behind the Numbers. Hi, Dave. Good morning. Uh, it's nice to be with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. Tell the audience a little bit about who you are, please, Roger. Sure. Uh, again, my name is Roger Slagle, and I'm the Vice President for Finance and Administration, or CFO, at Mars Hill University. Um, I've been in this role for a little over a year now. Prior to joining Mars Hill as a CFO, I spent my finance career in industry holding roles, including director, corporate controller, and CFO across several organizations uh, and industries, including banking, equipment rental, construction equipment, and even diagnostic uh, testing laboratories. Um, so while I spent a lot of my time in industry, I'm really enjoying my role here, my finance role here at the university and enjoy working uh, here. At, and again, it's good to be with you this morning. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And, and I've had the pleasure of working with you in the past, and I, I've seen you evolve as a finance leader. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation. But before we dive into the kind of the compare and contrast lens of the CFO in corporate world versus academia, why don't you tell us a little bit about when you started teaching and what inspired you to go into teaching and then working your way into the administrative role there? Okay, yeah, thanks. I. Um so I've been I've taught for the university. Uh, so I spent my career in, in industry, the majority of it in industry. But during that time, while I was in industry. I I taught adjunct for the university. So I've been teaching for them about twenty years now, and I actually still do teach um, at least one course a semester. And I, I've always been a lifelong learner. I think that's something that we should all do is continue to learn things and, and sharpen our sharpen our skill set, if you will, or keep them sharp. So always had that that passion and then um, kind of gotten in, got into uh, teaching by uh, by accident a friend of mine that I went through graduate school with couldn't do a course and ask if if I would would do it and you know, I said sure if the university will you know approve me and accept me then um, that's that's great so talked to them they they approved me I taught a taught a finance class and and that was 20 years ago so um, <laughs> Got in the classroom, loved it, enjoyed it. Uh, felt like it was a way to give back and share, you know, share my experience, share my knowledge. So I, I got the bug uh, for teaching, if you will, and then being able to join the university in a finance role really married two things that I really enjoy is, you know, learning and education, but then also the operational finance role. So it was a, a good, a good matchup for me. That's wonderful. I'm going to give you a chance just to talk for a moment about the university. Tell us about Mars Hill. Sure. Mars Hill University is a private liberal arts university located about 15 or 20 minutes um, outside of Asheville, North Carolina, in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, the university was founded in 1856, so we've served our area for over 160 years, and we're really proud to be a long-standing part of the community fabric here, as well as serving our students from all over the world. So um, we've got deep roots here, and University offers undergraduate and graduate degree programs across many disciplines, far too many for me to, to name off here in, in our time, but we have residential commuter and online degree programs. And we really pride ourselves as a, you know, a smaller liberal arts university, we really pride ourselves in providing a quality educational experience and being passionate about our students' success, which is the reason we're here is to, to serve the students and um, help them help them change their tra trajectory yeah i like that especially the beautiful blue ridge mountains you painted a nice picture for us all thank you for that so you you've grown up in the corporate world you've transitioned into the academic world what is it that industry can learn from academia from what you've seen so far roger uh, that, that's a great question i think you know um one thing that i think industry can can learn from academia particularly maybe um you know that mid-size or entrepreneurial uh, organization is um, academia moves at a at a slower slower pace, and I think sometimes industry moves at a fast pace. Of course, we all have to move at, at faster paces now to to stay competitive and, and stay current. 
but I think um, I think NC can can learn from from higher ed by um, slowing down a little bit and you know maybe uh, not acting so fast because I think sometimes we um, you know we can get wrapped up in in the speed of movement and uh, maybe fail to consider all the aspects of some of this. I think that may be one thing that, that industry can learn from higher ed, but I think that's a two-way street. I think, um, you know, higher ed is adapting and having to move faster as competitive forces, you know, affect all of us. So I think, I think both sides can learn from each other. Yeah, understood. And, and you and I have talked many times in the past, and I, I know your view is that the role of finance is what I would call a business partner in an organization. Can you articulate what that means from your perspective? Yeah, I think to me, uh, you know, the, to me, a business partner is um, someone in the organization that, that can come alongside the operating managers and help them translate, you know, actions or translate strategy into numbers. Because um, at the at the end of the day, and I know I know this is important um, in your world too, um, numbers or the language of, of business or the language of an organization. So I think a good business partner can come alongside the operating side of the business and, and translate those actions into numbers, but then also support the operating manager of the organization to understand the impact of different things and how it might affect the numbers of the organization. So working together to, to look at that, that cause and effect and, and find the best, best path forward. Yeah, I want to talk to you now about the kind of your evolution, if you will, Roger. And we've seen it with other folks and organizations evolving from controller to, to the CFO role. What happens in that mindset going from kind of the, the audit mindset to the operational mindset? Yeah, that's, that's a pretty big shift. Um, and I think probably a shift that the, the finance leaders that you, you read about now are, are talking about. But for me, in my experience, I think in the control role, I was much more focused on ticking and tying the numbers, let's say, and making sure we had the, the close done on, you know, the third day of the month or whatever that might be in, in the recording and, and preparing for the audit. So in my experience, the control role, while I tried to not only focus on that, it, it's hard not to, but you're really looking in the rearview mirror and looking at the results and the numbers that have already occurred. I think as you make that shift into operational finance or into a CFO role, you're looking in the windshield, you're looking out ahead and saying, okay, we know where we've been, but where do we want to go and how do we chart a path for that? And again, to tie that in with the business partner, I think that's where, you know, a finance leader can come onto a leadership team or a management team and help articulate that, you know, that vision in terms of the impact on the organization and, and help chart that, that course and chart that path on on where we want to go. Roger, tell the folks who are watching and listening how they can contact you if they want to learn more about you or the university. Okay, sure. Um, you can find you can find me on uh, LinkedIn, Roger Slagle on LinkedIn. Um, the university website is mhu.edu. And then you can always reach out to me by email at rslagle at mhu.edu. So that's R-S-L-A-G-L-E at mhu.edu. Thanks, Roger. And that's a good spot to take a quick commercial break. It goes fast here, Roger. You sit tight, grab a slug of coffee if you want, and you watching and listening, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Behind the Numbers after this quick break. Lots of windows, great light. But the birds. They're back. Yes, I hear them. Uh-oh. Why are these birds so angry? At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. We save a lot. I'm going. I'm going. Ah! Hurry, hurry. I know, I know, For I know. bundling made easy, go to geico.com.
Welcome. I'm Barry Lefkowitz. I'm your host on New Perspectives on RVN TV. I come to you each week with issues and topics that you will generally find in the news. And if you're looking to be able to get caught up and know what's going on, then New Perspectives is the show for you on RVN TV. Look forward to having you. And welcome back to Behind the Numbers. I'm Dave Bookbinder, and today we're talking with Roger Slagel, who is CFO and Vice President Finance at Mars Hill University. Roger, welcome back for round two of Behind the Numbers. Glad you're still there. <laughs> we, um, we had a good conversation in the first segment. I want to just continue to expound on that. Um, something that you're, you're living now in academia and something that you've lived in the corporate world, and that's the communication with the CEO. You know, as, the, as the CFO, you are the financial steward for the firm. Um, in a lot of organizations, it's the second in command. What is that role like and the responsibility of having to communicate with the CEO daily, good news, bad news, and upstreaming information? Yeah, that um, yeah, you hit the nail on the head there, Dave. I think the dynamic I've always tried to to build is a you know a relationship of communication and trust. I think in this role, in the finance role, you know, as you said, it's a fiduciary role, so you have to build that trust with the uh, CEO of the organization and and communicate clearly. And you know, my goal is always um, not for for my uh, my CEO not to have have any surprises so we have an open dialogue really a continuous dialogue about what's going on in the organization and you know what the impact might be so i think everyone moving into this role should foster that that relationship and foster that trust between not just the ceo but the operating team as well or the management team as well yeah well said that's a good segue into the next thing i was going to ask you about because the the role of the CEO, or excuse me, the CFO continues to evolve over time where uh, many of the CFOs that I talk to are responsible for many other functions besides the finance function, you know, HR, IT, et cetera. Um, what's been your experience in terms of additional roles and responsibilities outside of the function? Yeah, it, very similar to what you described. I think, you know, all organizations now are, are trying to do um, more with, with less. So, you know, um, you, you, a lot of roles end up with different hats. And, and my experience has been that, you know, it's not uncommon for in, in a CFO's portfolio of, um, I guess, uh, duties for that to include operational items. And I think that's a trend that we're seeing in a lot of organizations. Um, so it's not uncommon to see HR, sometimes even legal, um, depending on the structure of the organization. Um, you know, IT is, is common in the role. I think those three you're seeing, or at least I'm, I'm seeing those as more common in the CFO's portfolio as well. And then, you know, then coming alongside the operating managers as well. Yeah, another component of being a financial steward um, it involves leadership. And that's a word that we hear bandied about a lot, especially in these days. Uh, it's got a lot of different meanings for a lot of individuals. And there, there's no wrong answer to this, Roger, but when you think about leadership in the role of the CFO, what does that mean for you? Yeah, um, I think, you know, I think, again, keep coming back to this this business partner, I think, well, I guess first I'll let me back up and say my my leadership style is, is servant leadership. So I see the role of, of finance and the CFO as a as a support and a business partner to the organization. So I think I think our role in finance is to support the organization, support the managers, try to help them procure the tools that they need to be successful and, and be effective. Uh, that's the way I approach the role and the way I see it. So really, I guess you could boil that down into those two things, being a, a servant leader, how can I support and serve the, the organization? But then also, and I think you do that by being a good business partner and helping folks achieve what it is they need to achieve because if everybody is you know got the tools they need and they're rowing in the right direction the organization is going to move forward and, and achieve its goals yeah thank you for that roger for anybody who wants to connect with you or learn more about the beautiful blue ridge mountains how can they contact you sure you can you can find me on linkedin roger slagle on linkedin or our 
our university website is mhu.edu. My email is rslagle, R-S-L-A-G-L-E, at mhu.edu. Great. Uh, Roger, I want to take you into the world of uh, M&A, mergers and acquisitions. Uh, you and I first met and worked together in that realm. Um, you were going through an acquisition. We helped with the purchase price allocation, et cetera. What's been your experience in going through mergers and acquisitions? Obviously, the desire is the synergies of one plus one equals three. How does it really work from what you've seen? Yeah, I think, you know, I've been, been through a few of those in, in my career. Um, I think, you know, on the front end of, a, of an acquisition or a merger, you, you can never, and, and I'm probably preaching to the choir, but you can never, you can never underestimate the difficulties of integrating people and, and systems. So, you know, the more you can plan, the more you can uh, try to chart that out and anticipate the, um, you know, the roadblocks, the, the better, because, you know, and, and even our best laid plans, there's always, they're always, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit rocky to, to do that. Um, but I think if we can plan and chart that out on the front end, the better. And then, of course, as you said, there's always, always pressure to achieve those synergies and all, and that puts that puts a strain on the organization and the people. So I think we have to be mindful of that and, and manage that process because, um, as you said, we're we're trying to make one plus one equal three. Yeah, and when you talk about integrating people, obviously that's one of the biggest challenges that I hear about and what I've experienced personally and professionally, both buy side, sell side, and in the advisory role. So that totally resonates. Um, Roger, what's keeping you up at night? What, what do you think other finance leaders are, uh, are thinking about when they're tossing at 3 a.m.? Yeah, and I think, well, that's a great question. Not, it, and this is not uncommon um, to me. I'm sure you see it from your other clients and, and all, but uh, two things that, that keep me up night is at night is cybersecurity, and we see a lot of that in, in higher ed. If you read the the uh, chronicles and uh, the periodicals that come out for higher ed and industry in general, you see a lot more about cybersecurity now. I think we're at, at heightened risk. Ransomware is is a is a huge operational risk um, because as we all are living in a more increasingly digital world, we have more and more. On the cloud, we have more and more digital, uh, if not almost everything digital. So, you know, the risk of a, of a ransomware attack or, or some type of cyber attack could really pose a huge risk to an organization. So that's one thing that we we keep our eyes on, and and we have to. Um, the other thing is, I think that keeps me up at night is again, as organizations are are having to do, you know, more with with less. Um, making sure that all of our that we're optimizing our processes we're optimizing our systems so thinking about it and systems making sure that we're leveraging those platforms in the most efficient way so that that we can provide good tools for our our folks and we're able to kind of scale that so that we are efficient and we can can actually do more with less without you know really burning out our people so those are two two things that that are in the forefront of my mind uh, pretty pretty consistently yeah, and that's a recurring theme too. You're, you're not alone in those concerns. We are just about out of time here, Roger, but I want to ask you one more thing, maybe in like 60 seconds, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, just offering advice to other folks who are out there who are on their way to becoming a CFO or are currently in seat. What advice would you have for them? I think first off, and again, this is just my uh, love for higher ed, I would, I would say always, or education, I guess, always sharpen your skill set, always try to, you know, uh, keep current with what's going on, read periodicals, take some classes here and there. Um, and then if you're, you know, if you're new in your, your career, or relatively new, and you're, you're trying to get to the CFO, CFO role, I would look at credentials, make sure you've got you know, um, credentials in the field of CPA, CMA. Um, I think that's really valuable. That sets you apart. Uh, and also it keeps your, your skills sharp. Um, but then I would also, you know, encourage anyone wanting to become a CFO in your role, try to, try to understand what being a business partner is, read up, read up on that and, and try to practice that because that'll make you an invaluable part of the organization and will really go a long way in helping you stand out uh, amongst the crowd. Sage advice. I would just add that uh, as a part of your continuing education, uh, check out some good business podcasts. There's a lot of interesting guests who come on and talk about really cool stuff like what you're discussing. Uh, Roger, we're out of time, unfortunately. Thank you for joining us today on Behind the Numbers. Thank you, Dave.
We've been talking with Roger Slagle today, Vice President and CFO at Mars Hill University. Again, my name is Dave Bookbinder, and I'm the person that my clients turn to when they want to know what their most important assets are worth. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to have a conversation. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And again, as always, thank you for watching and listening and your continued support. We can't do it without you. Uh, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave a review, shoot me a note. Your feedback's always appreciated. Until we uh, meet you again here next week, take care, everybody.